We are teaching a sermon today entitled, I Was Not Disobedient to the Heavenly Vision. I'll say it again. I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. You'll find that in Acts chapter 26, verse 19. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Now, before we read that entire passage, let me just set some context for it so that we have a full understanding of everything that Paul is saying here. When Paul is addressing King Agrippa, he is standing on trial for his life. The Jewish leadership of that day was wanting to condemn him to death. And he was standing before Agrippa, answering the charges that were brought against him. He was charged with being seditious. He was charged with being riotous. He was charged with being a member of the cult of the Nazarenes. That was just a mean way of saying Christians. He was charged with being unruly. He was charged with upsetting the Jewish tradition. He was charged with being against the law of Moses. And the charges were so uh, vile against him, and they were all untrue. The charges worked up the crowd while he was in Jerusalem worshiping in the temple. The crowd got so stirred up against him. You know, there's folks that can stir up a crowd against the worship. To God. Somebody say amen. The crowd was so stirred up against him that they laid hands on him and they were going to kill him on the spot. And it was only because the Romans rode in in force. 200 soldiers had to come into the temple area and rescue Paul from the angry mob. And when they rescued him, they thought, well, we are going to find out what this is all about. And they started to beat him. And Paul says, you can't beat Beat me. I am a Roman citizen. Someone say, Praise the Lord. And he says, I appeal to Caesar. And so they took him away from Jerusalem and they sent him to the next level of authority, and that was in Caesarea. That was before the governor. And it was Governor Felix that Paul stood before. And he, he uh, was before Governor Felix for a period of two years. He was in prison in Caesarea for two years. And every once in a while, the governor would bring Paul out and have him answer his questions, hoping that he could get a bribe from Paul. But all Paul did was preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, after about two years... Governor Felix was replaced with Governor Festus. Governor Festus listened to Paul, and and Governor Festus says, I can't find anything that this guy has done that's worthy of death. In fact, I can't even figure out what crime he has committed. So when King Agrippa showed up on the scene, Festus said to King Agrippa, will you talk to this guy named Paul? I can't find anything wrong with him. They want him killed. I don't know what to do with him. He's appealing to Caesar. I can't send him to Caesar without saying what crime he is committed. So will you go talk to Paul? And Augustus said, yes, absolutely. I'll go talk to him. And that's where we pick up Acts chapter 26, beginning in verse 12. Augustus said to Paul, what is your story and Paul says have I got a story for you (laughs) come on somebody you do too you've got a story what are the things that God has done in your life praise the Lord and so Paul starts out in Acts 26 giving his testimony to King Agrippa I'm going to begin in verse 12 of Acts 26 Paul says thus While thus occupied, I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests. Now, he was occupied in hunting down Christians. He was occupied in persecuting the church. He was full of zeal. He was full of vim. He was full of vigor. He was going to stamp out this movement called the way, called Christianity, called the cult of the Nazarenes. He was absolutely opposed to it. And that was the occupation that he is referring to in verse 12. But in verse 13, every 
everything changed. I want you to know in a moment everything can change. Glory to God. Verse 13, it says, At midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. Verse 14, And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Verse 15, So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But arise, stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. Everybody say, for this purpose. To make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen, the resurrected Lord, and of the things which I will yet reveal to you, the gospel of grace. Verse 17, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. Verse 18, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Verse 19, this is our text. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea, then to the Gentiles, that they should repent Turn to God and do the works befitting repentance. And the church said, Amen and Amen. What is interesting about this passage to me is these are the words of a man that is on trial for his life. These are the words of a man that has been accused by the religious rulership of his day that he is a sinner, that he is seditious, that he is a rioter, that he is following the wrong path. And the man stands up and he gives an overview of his life. And that overview can be broken down into three points. Here's point number one. Paul said, I had a plan, but God had a different plan. And the church said, amen. Here's point number two. God imparted vision unto Paul. He had a very clear commission. Here's number three. Paul was obedient to that vision throughout his life. As a pastor, when I read verse 19, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. It, it struck me, and I had to ask within myself, have I been obedient? Lord God, have I been obedient to the commission, to the call, to the heavenly vision that you have planted in my heart? But that is not a message just for pastors. That is not just a message for the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. That is a message for every single believer. And if we were put on trial, what would be the testimony that we would give? Would it be similar to Paul's testimony? I had a plan, but God had a different plan. And when God revealed his plan to me, he revealed it with clarity. And I have lived my life in obedience to that plan. Would we say those words? I pray that we would. I pray that we would. Every single believer has a powerful testimony. I was living one way. I met Jesus Christ. He changed everything, and now I'm living another way. Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe it's not as dramatic as a Damascus Road experience where light comes from heaven. But if you are a believer, you got the light living on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's a Damascus Road experience. Sometimes it's a Sunday school experience. Sometimes it can be an anywhere experience, but the revelation is this I had plans for my life they didn't match up with God's plans for my life I met Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ I had a whole new plan laid out for me and you know what I'm gonna be obedient to that heavenly vision glory to God someone say praise the Lord Praise the Lord. I think it's time that we get God off the back burner. 
I think it's time that we get living up for Jesus off the back burner. I think it's time that we just get over the thing that we'll tip our hat. We'll say hello on, on Easter and hello on Christmas morning. No, I think it's time that we make Jesus central to everything in our life. I think Jesus has got to be at the center of our family, the center of our marriage, the center of our employment, the center of our worship, the center of our thoughts, the first words in our mouth, the last words of our day. He's got to be every breath in our Lord to God. He's got to be every breath in our lungs. I think it's time that we're obedient to the heavenly vision. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, I don't have a heavenly vision. We're going to get there. Because if you're a born-again believer, God's got a vision for your life. And it's straight from the throne rooms of heaven. Hallelujah. Don't settle for anything less. Don't settle for anything less. You say, I got my life all mapped out. So did Paul. Paul had his life all mapped out. Man, he said, I, I had a plan. I had a plan since I was eight days old. I had a plan. I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I was a tribe of Benjamin. Uh, concerning the law, I was faultless. The ceremonial law. Concerning the law, I was faultless, he said. I was on track. I was a member of the Sanhedrin. I held the coats of those who stoned the, the, the deacon Stephen to death death man I was on a track to be the greatest Pharisee that you've ever heard about in your life until a noonday hour when the heavens opened up and the beam of light came down and I heard a voice and it changed everything in my life he said I was on a plan I was on a track uh, if you want to talk about zealous, I was zealous. If you want to talk about religious, I was religious. Man, I was a card-carrying Pharisee. Hallelujah. And I was killing people thinking I was doing God a favor. I was killing people trying to please God. I was killing people thinking that this is the will of God in my life. Round them up, torture them, imprison them, hopefully get them to blaspheme the name of Jesus before I put them to death. He said, that was my plan. He said, I, I was doing it all over the place. That, that was my plan. And, and he said, it, it, this is what Jesus says. Yeah, Paul, it's hard to kick against the goats. Every time Paul did something wrong, every time Paul did something wrong, the Holy Spirit was sticking him. You know what a goat is? A goat is a sharp stick that you use to move cattle along the road. And a goat is what the Holy Spirit does when you're on the wrong path. And, and Jesus says, Saul, it's hard to kick against the, the goads. In other words, it's hard to, to kick against the pricks. And the Holy Spirit was pricking him, pricking him, pricking him, pricking him. You're doing the wrong thing. You're going the wrong way. You're doing the wrong thing. Until finally the heavens had to open up and say, hey, man, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Acts 26 and verse 14 when we had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying to me in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the goads. There are some of us in the body of Christ that are not quite where we're supposed to be concerning the will of God for our lives. And you are kicking against the goads. Let me encourage you. Why don't you move with the Holy Spirit rather than fight the Holy Spirit? Why don't you just say, Lord, I'm willing to go where you want me to go. Get in the current of the river and let the current carry you to where God wants you to be in this life. It's hard to kick against the goats. Hallelujah. So I said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. And Paul said, oh, brother, <laughs> I'm Jesus who you are persecuting. If you're going to persecute anybody, you do not want to be persecuting the resurrected Lord, King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Now, Paul had such a dramatic conversion event that he used it when he was standing trial for his life. 
And he not only used it when he was standing trial for his life, he used it over and over again. You will read it with some commonality in the letters that he wrote. He said, I want everyone to understand that I used to be the persecutor of the church. Now I am the apostle of the church, and that just reveals the kind of God that we have. When God could have stricken me dead, he met me on a Damascus road and gave me an assignment. Watch with me in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 1 Timothy 1 and 12. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry. And everybody says, praise the Lord for that. That's a wonderful thing. Glory to God. Verse 13. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but... I obtained mercy. Everybody say, thank God for mercy. <laughs> the way we were, the, I said the way we were isn't how we have to be. God can get hold of us. Glory to God. He says, I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of the Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul said, there isn't a sinner worse than me. He said, I was doing the worst. I was the very worst. And if God will save me, God will save you. If God will redeem me, God will redeem you. If God has a plan for me, God has a plan for you. If God will count me faithful, putting me in the ministry, God will count you faithful, putting you in the ministry. He says, there's not anybody as bad as what I was, but look what God has done with me. You think you're so bad that God can't do anything with you. You. Let me tell you, God's just getting started in your life. He hasn't given up on you. He hasn't forgotten about you. He wants to use you. Hallelujah. He is merciful. He is merciful. Praise the Lord. Verse 16. However, for this reason I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. This is what Paul is saying. He says, listen, I was chief of all sinners. I was a persecutor. I was a blasphemer. I was an insolent man, but I obtained mercy. And the patience that God showed in my life is a pattern. Oh, my goodness. Is a pattern to those who are going to believe on him. He says, if God will be patient with me, God will be patient with you. If God can and redeem me God can redeem you he said let my life be a pattern unto you hallelujah Paul said I had a plan but God had a different plan you know what that's called that's called a testimony I once was blind but now I see was lost but now I'm found hallelujah that's a testimony. Don't be afraid of your testimony. Amen. These are the words that Paul spoke when he was on trial for his life. He said it over and over and over again. They said, Paul, tell me a little bit about yourself. He said, I'll tell you everything about me. I'm hiding nothing. I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. I was an insolent man. I tried to destroy the church of Jesus Christ. It was my plan to destroy the church, but it was his plan that I build the church of Jesus Christ, and I'm going to spend the rest of my life building that church. Hallelujah. Testify. I said testify. Hallelujah. First Pentecostal church I was ever in, the lady that was leading the praise and the worship. What was her name, Debbie? 
Nancy Harmon, glory to God. First Pentecostal church I was ever in in my life. I was raised in church. I was raised in a mainline church, wonderful church. I thank God for it. But then Debbie took me to a Pentecostal church, and Nancy Harmon was in that church, and Nancy Harmon was leading the praise and worship. And I said, my, oh, my, what is this all about? Everybody's raising their hands. Never seen that before in my life. Everybody's clapping. Never heard that before in my life. Everybody's singing the words off the wall. I always used a hymnal in my life. I never understood any of this. And I'm sitting in the very back row with this girl that I just met, and I was in love with her, and to go out with her, I had to go to church with her. And so I went to this Pentecostal church. And I'm, I'm, I'm literally holding on to the pew in front of me, white knuckled, holding on to the pew, thinking, where on earth am I right now? And, the, and, and this wonderful, dynamic, powerful, spirit-filled lady of God, she's a powerhouse, let me tell you what. She started coming out, out of the pulpit, down the, uh, down the aisle. I thought, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. And she would point at people, and she would point, and she'd say, testify, brother. And he'd pop up and start saying stuff testify sister she'd stand up start standing up and I, I was I was literally sweating I was sweating in my socks because I did not know what the word testify meant I thought she's gonna point at me and I'm just gonna die right on the spot I'm just gonna be dead that's it that's the end of me I'm just gonna die right in this pew dead in church I'm you're gonna die on the last row in this Pentecostal church thank God she didn't she didn't point at me and testify glory to God but I'll tell you one thing we overcome the devil with the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and you've got a testimony you don't need to know Alpha to the Omega you don't need to know the Genesis to the Revelation you don't have to have book and chapter memorized in your life all you need to know was I had a plan for my life I met Jesus Christ Jesus gave me a new plan for my life and everything's been better since then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, testify. Because we have to ask ourselves Am I living a life that is contrary to God's best for me? Am I living a life? Paul was full of mission it was just the wrong one Paul was full of passion it was just the wrong passions Paul was full of activity it was just the wrong activities he wasn't short of mission it was just wrong he wasn't short of a passion it was just wrong misplaced he wasn't short of vision passion mission value they were just wrong 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 until he met Jesus Christ. And we have to ask ourselves, hey, 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 am I living a life as believers? Am I living a life that is contrary to God's very, very, very best for my life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's hard to kick against the pricks. Yes, it is. And you know what I'm talking about. I felt them, haven't you? Where the Holy Spirit begins to nudge, begins to poke, the voice in the head, the little prick of the heart. Nope, 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 yep, nope, nope. Go that way. Don't go that way. Go that way. Don't say that. Say this. Get up. Move. Go. No, stay. Don't go. Got to hear. You got to hear. You got to hear what God's perfect will is. If the Holy Spirit will poke Paul, Saul really, and say you're doing it wrong, don't you know he'll do the same for us? Amen. Why would he do it? Because the Lord God is merciful. He's so merciful. He's so good. He's not casting anybody away. That's Paul's testimony. I was the very worst, but I obtained mercy. Mercy. Everybody say mercy. Mercy. Everybody say mercy. Mercy. You've got it. You obtain mercy. You obtain mercy. Before, before you came to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you lived by mercy. That's all you had was mercy. <laughs> Thank God he's merciful. 
Now, amen. once you're a born again believer, you got covenant. Amen. <laughs> you were counting on mercy before, <laughs> but now you got covenant. Amen. You are a legal heir of Jesus Christ to every covenant blessing that God details in the Word of God. We're children of covenant. We used, we used to be disobedient, evildoers needing mercy, and now we are children of covenant. Hallelujah. So let me ask, have you done your self-assessment lately? Have you looked within? In 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, it says, Examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves, surely. You know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you failed the test of genuine faith. It, it is good to, it says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Let a man examine himself. The best, the best person to examine you is you, <laughs> with the help of the Holy Spirit. And you look in, into deep within your heart. And you say, Holy Spirit, get out your sharp stick. Again, poking and prodding. And let's find out if I'm really on the path that I'm supposed to be on. If I'm really living the life that I'm supposed to be living. The life that you have chosen for me. So, number one, while Paul was on trial for his life, the first thing he says is, I have a testimony. I was living a life according to my plan. I met Jesus, and he changed all of those plans into a better life. Glory to God. Here's the second point. He said, when I met Jesus, he gave me a revelation of the purpose of my life. He gave me a commission. Let's pick it up in Acts 26, verse 12. Jesus said to Saul, who became Paul, But rise, stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. He is just about to impart purpose into Saul's life. He will impart purpose into your life. Every person has purpose. Amen. And when you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live in the heart of the believer, and the Holy Spirit is the only one that can reveal God's purpose for your life. And let me tell you, He wants to do it. He's not withholding it. He wants you to have the revelation that there's a reason why you are on planet Earth. Hallelujah. Arise, I appear to you for this purpose to make you, number one. Here's the purposes of Paul. Number one, to make you a minister and a witness of the things which you have seen. What had he, what had he seen? He saw the resurrected Jesus Christ. He saw the very one that he also saw on the cross. Now he sees him resurrected. The things which you have seen, the resurrected Lord, and the things which I will yet reveal to you, which was the gospel of grace, the gospel that brought the Gentiles into the body of Christ. It, Paul was taught directly by revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul was not taught by the apostles. Paul was taught by Jesus, Amen. the resurrected Jesus. So he says, I'm going to make you a minister and a witness. Do you think Paul was a good minister? Do you think Paul was a good witness? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Verse 17. Here's number two. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as from the Gentiles. Number two. I, to whom I will now send you. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. It said Peter was the apostle to Jews. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. It is the teaching of Paul that we understand the gospel of grace. And the church said amen. Here's point three in Paul's purpose. Verse 18. To open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness into light. To give them a spiritual revelation. To open their spiritual spiritually blind eyes give them revelation of God's will and number four and from the power of Satan to the power of God Paul was all about the power of the Holy Spirit in the life of his ministry he told the church at Corinth he says my speech my preaching was not with 
man's wisdom and the enticing words of man, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Paul had a miracle ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kerchiefs from Paul healed people. Paul had a miracle ministry. And finally, number five, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins, inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Paul was to preach forgiveness of sins and inheritance of every single covenant blessing that we have in that Bible you hold in your hand. So Paul's purpose was to be a minister and a witness. Paul's purpose was to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Paul's purpose was to open spiritually blind eyes. Paul's purpose was to turn people from the power of Satan to the power of God. Paul's pe purpose was to preach forgiveness of sins and inheritance by faith. That's quite a purpose. I said, that's quite a purpose. Do you have clarity about yours? Do you have clarity about your purpose in the Lord there is a purpose God has designed you uniquely and you do have purpose in your life I'm so thankful for the local church where the body of believers can come together and the Word of God is preached and the Holy Spirit moves on the heart of people and God begins to stir within you faith and understanding because you know what after the Holy Spirit reveals your purpose you're gonna need faith to do it Hallelujah. The, the Holy Spirit reveals your purpose. Hopefully, the preacher can build your faith to go after it. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You know what you need to hear more of? The Word of God. I said you need more Word, more Word, more Word. And the more purpose and the more revelation that you get, you're going to need more Word to keep it going. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are purpose to serve. We're purpose to share. We're purpose to sacrifice. We're purpose to go. We're purpose to baptize. We're purpose to disciple. Amen. Your purpose will never be independent of your local family. Your purpose will never be independent of the local assembly that God has planted you in. Because the psalmist says you're planted in the house, you flourish in the courts. Planted in the house, flourish in the courts. You need your church. Somebody say amen. amen. You need the family of God. You need to exercise your faith. You need to serve in the kingdom of God. You need to add your supply. You need to find where you can grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. You need to be in a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-moving, Word of God, devil-stomping, blood bought church of Jesus Christ. Hey, in these last days, we can't kid around anymore. In these terminus, termulus, termula, in these bad times, you can't fool around anymore. I tried to say tumultuous. <laughs> tumultuous wasn't coming out. In these, in these tough times, you, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Y'all only amen my mistakes. You need to get on board and give me, give me a good shout of praise, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lynn will edit that out for me. Glory to God. He always leaves those in. Hallelujah. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. And then point number three. Point number three. In Acts 26, verse 19, Paul said, I have not been disobedient. Paul said, I had a life. I had a plan. But God had a different plan. That's your testimony. And then... Paul said, when Jesus told me I had a, he had another plan, he, he revealed my purpose to me. And everybody needs their purpose revealed to them. And then finally he says, I was not disobedient to that heavenly vision. Acts 26 and 19, therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Verse 20, but declared first to those in Damascus, Jerusalem, throughout all the region of Judea, then to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. I was not disobedient. The greatest expression of your faith is obedience Amen. to the Word of God. Is obedience. 
Paul is uttering these words 27 years after his Damascus Road experience. 27 years. Paul was willing to go three missionary journeys. If you count this one where he's being sent back to, to Rome, four missionary journeys, planting churches. He was an apostle. Everywhere he went, planting churches. He wrote over half the New Testament, 13 letters of the 27, 13 letters. We have an understanding today of the grace of God, the principles of faith. We have an understanding of spiritual warfare, the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. We have an understanding of the body of Christ, how the body of Christ functions. We have an understanding of what love is. We have an understanding of what the rapture is. We have an under just about every doctrinal precept that we operate in as a New Testament church pretty much was handed to us by Paul. I want you to know that Paul was not disobedient to the heavenly vision and the greatest testimony that any of us will ever give is when we can stand on the day of our judgment you say Paul was judged by Agrippa I got you I, I want you to know there's a higher judgment coming we will all stand at the Bema seat of Christ we will all give an account of how we have lived our faith life and wouldn't it be wonderful that when we stand before the Lord we can all say Lord God Almighty we have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision that you planted in our hearts to win the world for Jesus Christ give the Lord a shout of praise I said give the Lord a shout of praise hallelujah if you will be obedient to the word stand to your feet right now and say Lord Jesus I'm gonna be obedient come on stand up right now say Lord Jesus I will be obedient say it out loud I will be obedient say it again I will be obedient lift your